Thank you, Mr. Simpson. Good morning, York High. I'm here to talk to you today about the theme from before YHS Thinks, which is the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 1 of which is that all persons are born free and equal. Now, I was thinking about this when Mr. Sims said that this was, um, this was a York High School Thinks um, theme. And I was thinking, you know, in the UK and in York and in this school, how relevant is this Universal Declaration of Human Rights? When we go home, we can flick on the news, we can look in a newspaper, and we can see people being mistreated around the world. We can see human rights violations and human rights issues around the world. And, and we're miles and miles away from that. So is it really relevant? And I absolutely believe that it is, and I believe that it is in this school, for that first article, that all persons are born free and equal. You come to school and you should expect to be treated equally and fairly. Now, I, I went to Easingwold School, and I left there in 2002. And I have some fond memories of the friends that I made, of the teachers that taught me, of the things that I achieved when I was there. But my experience at school wasn't perfect by any means. I was bullied. And still saying that now, I kind of feel ashamed. But I know, really, that I have nothing to be ashamed for. It's those people who bullied me who should feel ashamed of themselves. Now, I absolutely dreaded going to school. I hated it. I'd do everything I could to avoid going there. I'd pretend to be ill, and I would really wish that I could be ill, so I didn't have to go to school. I would skip lessons, and I missed quite a lot of school, and I really wish that hadn't been the case. I suffered physical violence, but I could deal with that. The pain inflicted by someone else's hand was only temporary. Destroying me inside were words. It was every name that I was called, and every vile thing that someone said to me that really hurt. I lost confidence, I lost self-respect, and I lost a feeling of self-worth. I had to go to hospital and see a dietitian because I wasn't eating. I'd stopped eating because of the things that people had been saying to me. And it took years to get over this. And it was the words that did this to me. So what gave anyone the right to bully me? Absolutely nothing. But why did they? Because I was different. There was something different about me and people thought that gave them the right to bully me and to treat me differently. They had absolutely no right. And there is no place for bullying in this school, in any school, in any part of society, in any part of the world. So what was that difference? What made me different? I'm gay. I'm gay. And saying that now, I can say it quite easily. But getting to that point took years. And one of my biggest regrets in life is that I didn't tell people that sooner. And I wish I could have told people at school. So let me just be clear about that. I didn't tell anyone at school. They thought that I was gay, and they thought that then gave them the right to treat me differently. I suffered homophobic bullying, and I was treated differently, and I, I experienced homophobia in that school because of who I am. So let me explore that. Homophobia is the fear, the hatred that people have because other people identify as lesbian, gay, or bisexual. They treat them unfavorably, and they treat them unfairly. It's the same as racism, and it's the same as sexism. There's no difference. So this is based around sexual orientation. So what's that? That describes who we're attracted to. If you're gay, you're attracted to someone of the same sex. If you're lesbian, you're, attracted, you're a woman who's attracted to another woman. If you're bisexual, you can be attracted to both men and women. And that's often abbreviated to LGB, lesbian, gay, bisexual. And if you're straight or heterosexual, then you're attracted to someone of the opposite sex. So what's homophobic bullying? What does that look like? It's the same. The forms of bullying are the same. It's verbal bullying, it's gossip, it's intimidating looks, it's ignoring someone, isolating someone, it's cyberbullying, it's bullying by the phone. And there's no place for bullying in this school, full stop. But I want to be clear to you that there's no place for homophobic bullying in this school. This school has a strong anti-bullying policy, and you should be aware of that. Now, I can't answer the question as to why someone would want to bully me or bully anyone else, but I can consider plenty of reasons why they wouldn't. Now, just think about if it was you. If it was you being bullied because of who you are, how would that make you feel? What about if it was a friend, if it was a family member, if it was someone that you cared about? If they were being bullied because of who they are, how would that make them feel, and how would that make you feel? Now, sometimes we can cause hurt without meaning to, because we don't think about what we're saying. We've all, all heard the expression, that's so gay, or something so gay. In that way, the word gay is, is used to mean something's bad, something's rubbish, something's unfair. But think about how that makes people feel when they hear that. It's offensive, it's upsetting, and it's hurtful. 
Now, just a couple of weeks ago, I was in this school, and I spoke to all of your teachers and all the staff here about the use of the word gay, and about how I wanted their commitment to tackle every instance of homophobia and every misuse of the word gay, every example of homophobic language. I asked for their commitment, and they gave me that. So you need to remember that when you leave the hall today, we're taking a stand against the use of homophobic language in this school, and it will not be tolerated. So if you take nothing else away from what I said today, then bear that in mind, that you can't use the word to mean something negative that causes offence to other people. Now this is all the negative. We need to think about the positive as well. Now each and every person in this room is different in some way. We're all different. And we have to celebrate that difference. Because we're fortunate to live in a diverse society where everyone brings something different to every situation. They have different perceptions, they have different views, and we have to absolutely appreciate that. Because the world would be really, really boring if we were all the same. Now we see lesbian, gay and bisexual people in everyday life, sometimes without knowing it. We look at the Olympics last year. Nicola Adams was the first woman to win a medal in the sport of boxing. We absolutely saluted her for her achievement. She did her country right. proud. She identifies as bisexual. Nick Grimshaw, the BBC Radio 1 presenter, is gay. Evan Davis, the presenter of Dragon's Den, is gay. Jesse J is bisexual. Darren Brown, the magician, is gay. Alan Carr, Gok Wan, Will Young are all gay. Dr Christian Jessen, who presents Embarrassing Illnesses, is gay. Jane Hill, the BBC News presenter, is lesbian. Lucy Spraggan from The X Factor is a lesbian. Dumbledore, the character in the Harry Potter books, is gay. Lord of the Rings, and in X-Men we have Gandalf and we have Magneto. The actor, Sir Ian McKellen, who plays those characters, is gay. Now at this point I need to apologise, because he's out in schools doing exactly what I'm doing today. So you've got me instead of an A-list celebrity, so for that I apologise. But all of these people are really open about who they are, and they're proud of who they are, they're proud of their sexual orientation, they're proud of what makes them different. You should all be proud. That's why I'm speaking to you today. You should be proud of who you are, and you should be proud of what makes you different. Now, being gay is only a part of who I am. Despite my experience in school, I went on to college, and I've gone into the workplace. And I've done things that I'm proud of. I worked in retail, I worked in recruitment, and in 2006, I joined Aviva, the insurance company that's based in the city centre. I've worked in business change and IT, and I now work in procurement. I'm a buyer, so I get to spend other people's money, which is great. I buy all of the things that keep our business running. And it could be things like pens and pencils, like laptops, like desks, all of this stuff. And in my job, I manage multi-million pound contracts with suppliers all over the world. So diversity is really important to me, considering the cultures of the people that I work with every day. In 2007, I was a founder member of Aviva Pride. We set up in Aviva an employee network group, a group of people around the UK who identify as lesbian, gay and bisexual, and people who support the cause as well because we want to make sure that everyone who comes to work can be themselves. People perform better when they can be themselves, and that's absolutely relevant to you guys here. You need to be able to be who you are in school, and treated fairly and equally for that. I'm also, or previously been, a youth worker. I organised Gay Pride in York in 2010. I was the chair of the York and District LGBT Forum. I advised the council on equality issues. I've been fundraising for the Albert Kennedy Trust, which supports young people who are made homeless because of their sexual orientation. I've volunteered at Race for Life events. I've worked with Stonewall, the lesbian, gay, bisexual charity who support people in school, people in the workplace, and people in society, trying to challenge legislation and make changes in our society. I visit the Homeless Centre every Christmas day and volunteer there. I've been involved in politics. I was a candidate in the local elections in 2011. I go to different workplaces, I go to different schools, and I talk about what I'm talking about today with them. I'm also a bouncer in my spare time, so I have quite a wide range of interests outside of work. And it's all part of who I am. Now, because of my work in the community, then Aviva asked me to attend the One Young World Summit in the United States in last October. Now, I went there along with 1,300 other people, young leaders from around the world, represented 180 different countries. So you can imagine the diversity that was there. Now, I address all of those 1,300 delegates about lesbian, gay and bisexual equality around the world, particularly highlighting the plight of those people in 77 countries around the world where it's illegal to be gay. The reaction to my speech was really positive. I spoke to loads of people who are now going back to their countries to put actions in place to address these issues that I've discussed with you and that i discussed with them. Now, when I was at One Young World, some of the speakers there were incredible. 
Bill Clinton, the former President of the United States, was there. Kofi Annan, the former Secretary General of the United Nations, was there. Jamie Oliver, Josh Stone were there. And they told us that we're the future leaders of tomorrow. Now, my message to you is that if I'm a future leader of the future, if I'm a future leader of tomorrow, and you guys are the future leaders of the day after, you're going to go on and achieve great things in your lives, but your leadership absolutely has to start now. You can change the lives of the lesbian, gay, and bisexual people in this school and in our society. You need to stop using the word gay to mean something derogatory, something negative. You need to tell others to do the same. You need to be supportive if a friend tells you that they might be lesbian, gay, or bisexual. You need to report bullying and you need to speak out against bullies in this school. You need to think about what you're saying and the hurt that can have and the hurt that can cause to other people. And you need to celebrate the things that make you different and the things that make everyone else different. Now I'm on Twitter, at Simon Rogers, so if you want to tweet me and let me know about anything that you've heard today with any questions or if you have any thoughts to share, then please do. You can have a look at my blog online, which is simonrogers.org, and you can leave comments there. I'd encourage you to do so and let me know what you've thought about what we've discussed today. I want to close in saying thank you to you. Thank you for listening to me today. And I want to wish you all every success in everything you achieve here and everything you go on to achieve in your lives. Not despite who you are, but because of who you are. Good luck.